in this Parsha, Moses instructs the Jewish people that when they finally enter the land of Israel, settle and cultivate it, they're to bring their first ripened fruits to the holy sanctuary, and then they're commanded to rejoice. Rabbi, why did God specifically command the Jews to make a first fruit offering, and what makes that so important? There is a concept in Hebrew, it's called hakarat atov, appreciation of the good. In our lives, we are blessed with many different things. Some people are blessed with fortune of children, of other wealth. Everyone is different, but God granted us with our own good. It was a time that the first fruits, which means you have a field, the Torah commanded you to take the first fruit and bring it to the temple as an offering. It's not in a sense that God needed it. It's for you and for your children and for others to understand that there is God and there is an act of appreciation. It's act to know that whatever I have, I have to be thankful for the power that I have in my life. The Jewish people are commanded to rejoice with all the good that the Lord your God has granted you and your household, the Levite and the stranger who is among you. Why are we commanded to rejoice? Wouldn't we naturally rejoice given our arrival in the land? Why are we specifically commanded to rejoice with the strangers among us? The Torah wants to emphasize that God is the one who controls everything. God can give, God can take it back, take it away, transfer it to other people. So it's important to realize that there are others who need needs and they are part of our extended family. And we are blessed with something, we should share it with others. It's a very important social teaching in the Torah portion. Moses says to the Jewish people that after 40 years of wandering in the desert, they'd finally attained a heart to know, eyes to see, and ears to hear. What did Moses mean by this? And why did it take the Jewish people so long to get that state of understanding? It's the idea of leaving Egypt, leaving a type of slavery, going through a certain emotional process. It takes time for people to understand who they are and what they are going to. So the concept of being slave, then in a desert, is a concept that perpetuated in the mind of people. The idea that they're going through certain challenges, certain life ups, ups and downs, is something that you and I sometimes take in, in a, for granted when we not realize how many things happening in our lives. So Moses said before he passed, look, this is what happened. Let's refresh our memories for all these events that happened. And let's learn from all those ups and downs, especially mistakes we made. But Rabbi, why 40 years? Why that long length of time? The 40 year was not intended originally. It was planned for just a couple of days between leaving Egypt, crossing the sea, and entering the land. Rabbi Moses gives a, a very frightening and lengthy list of curses uh, if the Jewish people do not follow the Torah, including slaughter and war and famine and poverty. This list is especially chilling given the, the numerous tragedies that have befallen the Jewish people since uh, the destruction of the first temple. And of course, the Bible tells us that the first temple was destroyed because of the Jews' disobedience to God. Ramban Nachmanides explained to us that those lists already occurred, which is during the era of the second temple. If you read carefully the tragedies that befall upon us, which again, we are the cause of those tragedies. It's just a prophecy of Moses that already happened. Other rabbis hold that is a certain language of carrot and stick, which is you behave properly, you are blessed, not the other way around. It's a description of a certain actions and consequences. You have instruction, you have the blueprint of the Torah. I give you life, I give you a way of uh, behavior in your lives. You can take it and live properly. If you will be self-destructive, self-hating person, you created your own destiny. So this list of seven stages of sadness, it's a result of certain action that unfortunately, I'm not speaking individually so much, but as a nation, if you read carefully the Tanakh and you read the history of our people, part of that is the result of certain behavior. Are we to understand these blessings uh, for Jews individually or collectively as a people? It's go both ways. It's go both ways. It's individually and collectively. 
is the idea the Torah said specifically a sentence Merov Kol. The Kol is the sentence that come back from the book of Genesis when the Torah says that when Jacob met Esau and it was a talk between the two, Jacob said, I have everything. Kol, whatever I wish to, I have. Esau said, I have Rav, I have, but I'm not satisfied. This is an attitude that we see a lot in the book of Esther. In the book of Esther, you read the story, famous story of Haman. And when Haman met his uh, wife after leaving the king palace, what did he say? He said, I have wealth, I have family, I have all the honor, yet I'm not happy because Mordechai did not bow down to me. Which means that there are people who are never satisfied of what they have. So the Torah tells us, Merov call. When you are in those days that you have what you wish and you don't appreciate that, then what happens, you try to pursue something that is really not intended to be yours. And as a result, you will be a self-destructive person that end up with, in a sense, unblessed life. Rabbi, we've talked about the blessings and the curses, and really that all comes down to the choices that we make in relation to the laws that God's given us and in relation to how we perceive and respond to Him.